Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube. If for meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. Very, very excited to dive into the full moon that's happening in the sign of Sagittarius. I have my oracle cards here. I have the B tarot, which has been my right hand. And, um, another oracle deck here the black goddesses within oracle which has been gracing us gracing the community bahati love notes us youtube with a lot of light so i was thinking if i wanted to pull the chart for this full moon or if i wanted to lean further in my into my intuition and share what it is that i'm picking up for the collective for the full moon and the answer for me was tarot tarot intuition and approaching our guidance from our angels and our guides from that through that lens so feel free to take a moment while i get the card situated focus on the energy of the full moon maybe not necessarily exclusively where this full moon is happening within your life if you have pulled the chart but just your energy right now as a whole call in protection over yourself first and foremost always you should be doing that whenever you're connecting with any type of intuitive or gifted reader and ask to have discernment so that what is for you is something that you will hear loud and clear that it will ring like a bell that'll be obvious that you'll be able to feel within your body a change signaled by your intuition sent to you by your angels and your guides to say that this is the message this is the part that's meant for you if it isn't the entire reading itself make sure that with anything we don't want to force we don't want to force an answer we don't want to force an explanation we don't want to force a message nothing in life should be forced it's not worth it should be easy it should be effortless angels and guides from the highest lights of the universe i thank you so much for our time that we have here together now thank you so much for giving us the blessings of each and every single full and new moon cycle Thank you for awakening within us the magic to feel these changes, to be inspired by these changes. We ask for clarity. We ask for guidance. We ask to be prepared to plan for what is ahead of us, the future. We also ask for omens and signs of what is to come. We also, we also ask for blessings, protection, magic. Wow. Something's, I thought something was hitting the side of the house, but I think someone's working on the ground nearby. I want to thank each and every one of the viewers and listeners right now for their attention for their time, for showing up. And I call out for a blessing over them, whatever they may be going through. Good, bad, exciting, dull, monotonous, challenging. Okay, let's go ahead and see, 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 see. Three of Wands. I'll show you the tarot as soon as I'm done um, sitting with it. So Three of Wands, the world card reversed two of pentacles four of pentacles queen of swords upright and the moon card reversed i'm going to clarify the moon card reversed first here we go four of cups clarify the four of pentacles for me please the knight of cups clarify the queen of swords whoa 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 ace of cups wow some of you are um what i'm hearing is like i can relate to this too as well i was actually just talking to a close friend about this like moments ago um awareness 
like awareness of yourself, awareness of your needs, awareness, deeper awareness of who you are. <clears throat> Sometimes we have like this general knowing of ourselves. And then other times through life, we have this peeling back of the layers and we start to see ourselves, really, really see ourselves. What makes us tick? What our fears are? What our hidden desires and our wishes are? Sometimes, um, and I think we've been, this message has been coming up a lot lately in the collective readings. It's almost like um, we assume that something is what we want or we assume that we know exactly what it is that we want when really it's kind of reflecting a shadow aspect of ourselves, especially here with the moon card reversed, right? It's reflecting a, a shadow aspect of ourselves. If we actually got what it is that we wanted, would we really be happy? Would we really be fulfilled? Would we really be, would, the, would all, the, all, the, all the checks, like all the boxes, would they be checked? Would all of our cups be filled? And it's the divine's grace. That's how I'm seeing the world card right now. It's the divine's grace that per protects and prevents some things that we ask for from them coming and entering into our lives. With the queen of swords showing up, this is the card of keen awareness. Keen awareness. It's a, it's a sharpness. She is astute. She's aware. She observes. She analyzes. She processes. And for all that to happen, she uses a lot of energy in order to separate herself from her emotions or any type of energies that could sway her, pull her away from seeing something for what it is or seeing someone for who they are. This has a lot to do with you processing your emotions now. Um, this is something that I believe that the full moon is going to be bringing into your life is the ability to in the future, begin to see yourself and see situations, see a circumstance or energy for what it is, and to do what is in your best interest from a place of clear, crystal clear understanding of who you are, what is happening within you. You may not necessarily understand or agree with or love, or maybe you're excited by all of these things that may be happening around you, but you're not allowing that outside world to impact the clarity that it is that you have within yourself. Now, in the past, especially with the moon card reversed here, um, some of you guys may have accepted, settled into things, energies, people, relationships, life, habits, lifestyle that maybe not necessar didn't necessarily support you, wasn't necessarily the healthiest for you, and you almost kind of tolerated it, especially with the Two of Pentacles. The Two of Pentacles is the card of the juggling act and kind of taking with whatever you have here and um, maintaining, maintaining for good or for bad. Now, with the Four of Cups and the Moon card reversed in the card in the position of the past, I question, I call out, I ask for... Um, awareness and what this thing was what you were tolerating what you were accepting what you were like okay this is what i wanted for some of you guys you may have learned and heard that this thing that you're asking for or this job or this energy is a reflection of your of your vibration and what you deserve however there was some type of blockage that was separating you and that thing from coming together or from you being comfortable and being able to continue to coexist in that space. Basically what it is that I'm saying is, is like you, you were destined to outgrow it. You know, you may have had signs and, and little inklings of, okay, this is a fit, this is a mix, this works for me, this is what I want. But when push comes to shove, when it started getting closer and advancing into your life or when it's becomes a part of your day-to-day -day life, it, it wasn't, an easy, effortless, healthy vibe, connection, commitment. What, you know, like something that you should be committing yourself to. For some of us, it's, for some of us, it could be a lifestyle, like a, a way of living from our diet to our exercise to your mindset, how you perceive things, how you treat yourself, how you treat others. You may have you may have the veil lifting up as far as why you felt that that was the right thing and if it is actually the right match for you. For example, think about people 
who they are going through things like they're going through trauma or they are working on a goal and they're focused queen of swords energy and they are seeing a side of themselves that is serious that is stoic that is responsible and that old side of themselves it might be separating them from friendships and family or events that don't match your goal for your future for your purpose for your life so you start feeling okay wow these friendships are kind of falling apart or these connections are taking a hit let me try to be more nice you know let me be nice let me show up let me say yes and even though it sounds good in theory like you're high vibration you're all love you're all knowing you're accepting you're communicative that being nice is actually not good for you. It's not that you need to be mean, but you don't have to say yes to everything. You don't have to continue to tolerate and continue to show up in the way that you're expected to because that's not, that's not, it's not authentic, it's not organic, and it's not a part of your path and your process. Think about people who are encouraged to be nice all the time, to smile, to say yes, to not rock the boat. And it sounds good in theory in the realms of society and how society loves yes men and people who consume, consume, consume. But the truth is, is that you may need to create a blockage, a barrier, and a boundary between you and those things that want you to say yes to them. So it sounds good in theory to say yes and to be quote unquote the stereotypical person who's nice, but in truth, is that really, was it doing more harm than good? Was it putting you, was it exhausting you? Was it, making you actually be agitated towards the people that you are quote unquote you know told to be nice to you know i hope that makes sense i hope that resonates uh please let me know down in the comments if this is making sense it doesn't need to directly apply to your situation the intention is not for it to apply directly to your situation but for you to understand through the example you know so you can apply it to your life and just be like wow it did sound like that's what i'm supposed to be doing in theory but when i peel back the layers even though it should be the right thing, it's not the right thing. And this is the energy of the past, what it is that you are tolerating, what you were like coexisting with, you know. Um, I also want to say that for many of you guys with the Sagittarius full moon, it is highlighting energies that were misaligned to you. So maybe it's not necessarily you and the energy that you bring, but the energy that others bring or their intention or their truth or their perception of things. And I think that for the Sagittarius to the full moon, even though there's a lot of energies right now that are bringing clarity, there's also a lot of energies, especially um, Saturn's transit through Pisces. Sorry about that, loves. I had to double check the astrology chart because as you guys know, I'm pulling charts all the time. You would think that I would remember the placements. Um, and I do trust myself, but I have to, you know, as someone who likes really likes precision and accuracy, I have to double check to make sure that I'm getting my chart correct because I could have just pulled like a horary chart, a needle chart, but it is Saturn's transit through Pisces right now that's really calling us into um, trusting our, our, really taking our intuition and vibe seriously. Um, big time and they're very conflicting not to bring astrology into this reading but of course i'm going to saturn is so practical and so cold and so dense and pisces energy is so watery so emotional so movable and has so much depth and these two energies coming together are just like polar opposites you would think but they're teaching us how to apply both aspects of them to ourselves and the consequences if we don't if we're not open to receiving those lessons in this moment now, you know? So, yeah, I think there's a lot of, like I was saying, there's a lot of astro there's a lot of transits right now that are bringing a lot of clarity and there's a lot of transits that we're learning how to find clarity within ourselves, to trust our intuition, to double, double, triple, quadruple trek, you know, what we think, what we're feeling, to ask for discernment, and confirmation not to the point where it's excessive where we're delaying ourselves from making um inspired like taking inspired action like blessed and and entered and action that's protected but that there's an appropriate sense of pause and calm and not jumping you know or not reacting at all so that's something that i hope this is making sense i hope this isn't flying over anyone's head um 
basically in a nutshell what it is that i'm sensing from the past of this reading when it com comes to the blessings of the sagittarius full moon is there is something in the past that spirit is showing that we may have tolerated that we may have been coexisting in that we may have operated in like it was like our default setting and that setting wasn't necessarily for our highest and greatest good there's different reasons why that is the setting for how we approach life how we approach a relationship how we approach ourselves or whatever it is fill in the blank and there will be awareness given to you in the future as far as why that was the way that you felt it was the right thing to do but spirit the full moon sagittarius energy full moon and sagittarius energy is going to give you keen awareness three of wands the ability to see to sense to understand this energy here um so that you can have a full circle moment gain cl closure gain your own composure especially as you're branching into the future especially when it comes to your emotional health and well-being right and if we're honest with ourselves sometimes you think that you're doing things that are good for you you think that you know this is the way that you've learned to do it and this is the correct appro approach but sometimes it's important that we pivot sometimes it's important that we adjust and we learn because we have opened up a part of ourselves that we didn't necessarily understand before we couldn't see it we didn't have the eyes to see it but when you're learning and you're growing and you're progressing these doors of awareness to yourself are opening up and you learn something about yourself that you didn't necessarily know before and perfect divine timing this is your chance to pivot the full moon happening in the sign of Sagittarius of course Sagittarius rules wisdom philosophy travel expansion exploration knowledge philosophy um, higher education spirituality it of course all those generic things but really what I'm seeing here with the three of wands and especially the world card reverse is maybe seeing how how there was a part of us that limited ourselves. We only saw like half of the world or a little piece of the world and we were assuming that that was the whole world, that that is what it is. There's more to this world and there's more to us and there's more to the story than meets the eye. And there was a moment, an op a, a, a way of living in the past with the moon card where we assumed that the shadows that we were seeing were the truth. We assumed that what we were seeing, our perception was the reality when all we needed was a little change, a little pivot, a little eye-opening, awakening experience to see that, oh wow, I was only looking at this left corner when there's a whole vast world on my right. And that's what the Sagittarius full moon is going to bring. It's going to bring to you the awareness that there was more to this than meets the eye, that there's more to the world than you understood that you were looking at a tiny, tiny piece okay for some of you guys this is going to help you to bring closure to some parts of things that you were not um you didn't have peace with or it didn't settle right in your spirit or you were just kind of accepting it is what it is and just kind of moving forward with um not knowing for some of you guys this is not others but some of you will be telling your truth revealing truths speaking your truth i don't know if this is a secret sometimes the moon card can represent secrets things that we hide things that we are not necessarily proud of um, skeletons in the closet sometimes it can represent our psyche our subconscious the shadow aspects within ourselves that we may struggle with or that we may not lead the conversation with like that's not our first thing that we say like hi i'm so and so and i have a deathly fear of spiders you know i'm worried about a spider dropping on me right now you know like that's not my reality i'm just saying that as an example but most people say hi i'm so and so and you know where are you from blah 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 what school did you go to blah 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 it's like these superficial things these cards are talking about the depth of what makes you you your fears your subconscious desires your hidden desires your your wishes what makes you tick um things that you don't necessarily see things that you think about but you don't necessarily talk about things that others want and feel or things that are creating an, an unconscious 
blockage, but it's very much there. Maybe everyone else can see this blockage in your life but you. So um, it's showing you that there's something here to be seen. There's something here to be revealed. There's something here to observe and to take it seriously instead of, you know, just kind of saying, oh, it is what it is. This is who I am. This is the way that it is. Like, no, let's explore this a little further. There's a whole book that was at the library that they say you should probably read this based upon your <laughs> what you have been reading or based upon your energy this is what you should read and it's up to you to pick that book up and start to flip through the pages and to take it seriously to take that time now moving forward into the future from the Sagittarius full moon remember we have the four of pentacles and we also have the queen of swords these energies right here are the card of stillness and again keen sharp awareness like oh my gosh aha moment wow 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 so that's what it is that we are going to be experiencing for this full moon, especially, especially, especially when it comes to the joys of our heart. Now, when I say the joys of your heart, I do not mean for you to look for the things that have already made you happy and joyful and things that you understand about yourself, the world, what you love. There's something here that this book, the Sagittarius full moon is going to open up for you, a novel. You're going to discover it about yourself. You're going to discover it about the world. You're going to discover it about your relationships. It's going to create incredible, profound depth into who you are, an aspect of yourself that you may not necessarily have seen before. You didn't even know to look for it. You didn't even know to ask. How can you know, you know, what to look for if you don't even know that what you're looking for, you know, it's like one of those types of situations. So you just know that you're wanting something, you're craving something and that you're aware, wow, there is something else out there. There is something that is pulling me. For some of you guys, this could be travel. And this is the, the Sagittarius full moon, even though it rules travel, wisdom, expansion, education. After the full moon or around the energy of the full moon, you're not going to be actively exploring. You but there will be movement. The movement will be happening within your heart. The movement will be happening within your energy. Think about someone who says, okay, I am not happy here in the home environment. I'm comfortable, but it's starting to get stagnant. And now I'm starting to realize, wow, I do kind of want to travel or I do kind of want to learn. I do want to, you know, explore different schools or different things. And we do have a lot of Gemini energy here too. So it's like these it's connecting with friends it's connecting with the neighborhood it's connecting with social like social engagements different classes and things that get your mind turning so it's not that you're actively going to that class yet it's that you this is giving more like you're doing research you're still you're doing research and your heart is starting to jump and get butterflies because you realize that there's something exciting that is developing right now something that this is a potential for the future. So there's something here that's showing you may not necessarily see the act, active fruits and the movement of it physically. You may not necessarily, you may be looking at flights, you may be looking at travel destinations, you may be looking at different options and different retreats or whatever the case is. If we're gonna use travel as an, as an example, as a metaphor, this isn't necessarily that you are getting on that flight. This is something that's gonna be happening in the future, but the Sagittarius full moon is opening the door for you to feel the swell, the emotion, the excitement that you are planning and building for, for your future, things that you're gonna be, um, you know, uh, at events that you're gonna be undertaking in the near future. Guys, do take a moment and make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. If not, I'm going to invite you to do that. If you are um, subscribed, uh, make sure that your notifications are turned on. YouTube is doing a lot, not just for me, but for all of us here. I'm going to adjust in my seat a little bit and move my plant out of the way because she is very close to me right now. Let's continue shuffling, shall we? Also, um, I do offer Bahati Love Notes, which is an exclusive set of readings that I do throughout the week and throughout the month, a shuffling for a small group, a small collective. Um, I've been getting a lot of feedback from those who have been subscribed and how beneficial they have been, the readings have been. They're not light readings. We, pretty go, we usually go pretty deep. If you're someone who's invested in self-growth, self-growth, exploration, spirituality, deepening your sense of self, this is 
that's something that you might want to explore. If you're looking for more like trivial things, which are still important to you, but like relationship stuff, like what is this person thinking? How does this person feel about me? That's not something that you will find with Bahati Love Notes or usually with me. If I'm doing a personal reading, then yeah, I will definitely look into those things and I enjoy those type of questions. But for right now, how I show up for the collective is more, um, has, is, has a bit more depth and intensity. That's always been my level of approach. But um, Bahati Love Notes is there for you. Also a lot of journaling prompts, um, but definitely a lot of self-growth. Okay, so moving forward with the rest of this reading, we have the Rebirth card, Nine of Wands, High Priestess, Five of Wands. Yeah, this is showing that for some of you guys, um, I don't want to say, I don't want to say trigger, um, like it's not triggering, it's just like that, you know when you like realize something for the first time and you're just like, wow, like I had no idea I was doing things this way and it was causing me a lot of stress and it was making my life difficult and I just kept showing up in the same way or I just kept tolerating this or I just kept showing up. Like I just kept engaging in this energy. This is this deep sense of, wow, like how I used to do things is not, doesn't make sense to me anymore. And it's a, it's a reflection of your growth. If this is a relationship, this is, wow, like, how what I used to like or what I used to prioritize is not important to me anymore. This is not necessarily looking at someone else and judging. This is about your own growth and what you've learned about yourself. And it really feels like once you have this awakening, you can't go back. Like you're just so, your eyes are open. So you really can't go back to entertaining it anymore. For some of you guys, it's peeling back a layer of something that you were defensive or why you were defensive or why you maybe even like show up the way that you do where you're like, I don't really let people in. Why? Why is that? Or you think like you're this open hearted person, but then you realize, wow, I really am guarded. You know, nine of wands card. High priestess. Five of wands. It's the way that we protect ourselves. It's the way that we control our environment, control ourselves. It's the way that we, it's who we choose and why we choose those people. It's what we let in and why we allow that in. It's what we say yes to, what we say no to, and why that is. It's not, this is not something to force. It's something that settles into your spirit. And from that place, you are awakened and made brand new and a better version of yourself. A person who is loving, open-hearted, excited, focused, determined, meticulous. Yep, we have 10 of wands and the four of wands. It's th this sometimes with the Ten of Wands card, it has a lot to do with like stress and like the burdens and the bear the baggage that we carry. But truthfully, with the Ten of Wands and the Four of Wands together, it's the things that we willingly carry because it's worth it for us to carry it. It feels good for us to carry for us to carry it. Sorry about that, darlings. I was using my phone to record and she was overheating because it's literally 91 degrees and feels like 100 degrees out here. But I am feeling it. So, okay, let's continue. I don't know where we left off. I don't, I don't remember fully because my train of thought was interrupted or my stream of message was interrupted. Oh, it's like the things that we want to carry and like the awareness of why, 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 why we carry them in the first place. The value that they bring into our lives. Um, I have a little story time that I want to share with you. I was just like, do I really want to share this story? Because sometimes it makes my videos longer. But a lot of you guys tell me that you don't mind when they're long and lengthy. And then there's some that are just like, oh, I wish it was shorter. But um, it's my intention always to just kind of pour into you. Always, always, always. So feel free to listen to the story or feel free to ignore it. Back in the day, I was going through something like really like not only spiritually but not only was I having like the spiritual awakening um 
and even like finding myself within my own gifts but life was lifing and I didn't know what the future held I was very uncomfortable and I remember waiting I just loved the full moon so much I just love the full moon so much and waited for the full moon to, to happen for it for night to settle in and I walked out to because I really wanted like quiet sacred space like quiet time that was what it was but I don't think I knew that that was what I was looking for that that was what I needed um, and that sacred time that quiet time with me in the moon is essential that quiet time with me in the divine is essential with my angels my guides my intuition so that's what I was looking for and I lay down the, the, the place that I could go, the closest place that I could go was this trail that was right next to my place at the time. And I lay down on the walkway because I was scared to go into the grass because I didn't, I didn't, I don't know, I don't know. But um, I laid on the concrete in the middle of the, this path in the woods, this trail. And I waited, like I just waited and waited and was trying to connect with myself and just feel and have an answer to like what happens next, what do I do? And essentially it was me grounding myself, not realizing that that's what I was doing, but I looked, I felt this call to pull my head over to the right. I feel, I feel like the way that I was lying down, it had to be my right. It wasn't my left, I think it was my left. And I saw this ant walking by my head which if you know ants, they're not really like active like that at night, but it was carrying this big, like this big thing. I forget what it was. And the ant, when I saw that, I intuitively knew that it, it felt like this message of, you know, anything that you decide to carry, Jess, it's because it's worth it for you to carry. It's because it has value for you to carry it and to continue to carry it the entirety of the distance that you are feeling like you need to carry it. If not, you have to put this down. And I turned my head and I looked back at the, the clouds, or I looked back at the stars and at the trees kind of covering over me. And I decided that, not realizing it, that a lot of the stress that I was feeling was trauma and things that I hadn't come to terms with that I hadn't accepted but I was kind of coexisting with them I was kind of living with it and didn't have an answer wanted an answer but kept moving from a place of trying to get a resolution for myself for my spirit when sometimes there is no clarity that will come to you in that moment sometimes you just have to choose to let it go sometimes you just have to choose to allow that to be a blind spot something that you will never understand something that you cannot relate to something that you wouldn't do and choosing to stop looking into it was the most freeing part of me and something that, if I'm being honest with you, I have to remind myself to this day, especially when it comes to that, that area of trauma, that I, can, I choose not to understand a heart that I don't relate to in any way, shape, or form. And it helps me... I do like, and we also have the three of swords at the very bottom of this deck. It's important for you to process, to mourn, to grieve, but it's also important that you don't linger in spaces that there may not necessarily be a full write out answer for why, you know, why things are the way that they are, why things had to be the way that they, the, the, the way that they were, you know, or, or the way that they are. So I just want to share that message and maybe it will resonate with someone. And now who I am to this day is... Now, I'm not this like whole healed human being who doesn't have that, that resurfacing feeling come up again, but I do take time to this day, Four of Pentacles, to sit, to ground myself, to center myself in the same way that it was that I felt intuitively called to and led to back then, years, 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 years ago, over 10 years ago, and give myself the space to process those feelings, to dissect them, and to mourn, to give myself the boundary, the time, and then to pick up. Not empty, not avoiding, but whole in all these different parts of myself that were broken, shattered, you know, don't fit, you know, whatever, so to speak. So let's carry on. Any final messages 
action items, things to do, stuff to take for the full moon in Sagittarius. And then we'll move on to the oracle, the oracle process. Two of Swords. Wow, the Chariot card reversed though. And also these cards. Three of Cups, Nine of Swords, the Hangman. So it's interesting because the Two of Swords and the Chariot card reversed are very much and the um, messengers of stillness, of quiet, of seeking peace, of seeking a retreat this may be a sign for some of you I, honestly what the Sagittarius full moon is bringing from what I can see and sense from the cards and from the from the astrology chart is that this is a pl an important planning stage that is meant to awaken your heart and to open your heart and to allow your heart to bloom once again in the way that is authentic and unique to who you are after you've already undergone grown so much growth. If there are anxieties and tensions, it's usually because we are rushing so forward into the future that we're unable to pause, to reflect, and to process the blessings, the bounty in this moment. <clears throat> Ooh, God bless me. Um, yeah, this is about pausing. And even though, even though we have so much cards here, the hangman of stillness and surrendering and releasing and letting go and like anything, like think about the hangman here. Like if this was you and you had your backpack on and you had your pockets full and your hands holding on to a thing of marbles hanging there like that at some point you start to let those things go they start to fall out of your pocket the backpack starts to fall over your head the marbles start to loosen because from your from your grasp because it's instinctual for you to let go it's instinctual instinctual for you to release the things that don't serve you anymore you know whether it be an actual physical thing or whether it be a metaphor whether it be a belief whether it be a, a way of showing up um an answer for some of you guys you may be looking for an answer or looking for an explanation and it's simply not meant to come it's for you to accept it accept the situation and move forward because the only thing that you can control is yourself and it's important for you to prioritize your peace your health your health and your happiness i also want to tell you that for many of you you have to understand that when you stop controlling the ship, everything does have a way of falling together in the way that is perfect, divine, divinely orchestrated. And the two of swords, the, the chariot card here reversed and the hangman reversed is the, or the hangman upright is reminding you that great joy, great abundance, great blessings, great beauty, great bounty, great love, great prosperity, great peace comes to those oftentimes who have done the work in the past, but let go in the moment and allow themselves to release the outcome, to release their fears and to simply enjoy in the present state and the pre present status, whatever that looks like, whatever you can do. So it's not that you don't need to try anymore. It's just that if you're trying and your effort is creating more anxiety then peace then that's how you know it's time for you to give it to god give it to your angels and your guides give it to your ancestor team give it to the divine some of you guys are going to be using this full moon to manifest peace to manifest effortless protection and effortless blessing that isn't a direct result of your actions but that what is due to you what is owned to you what you owe some of you guys are so used to being someone who is always doing 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 for others and even like self-love and you taking care of yourself has turned into work that it's hard for you to rest it's hard for you to have ease right now and to take time off you may be trying to replace the act of doing with something else that may not necessarily look like the old thing, but it really is essentially kind of the same thing, only just in a different form. So it's like, how do we 
relinquish control? How do we step back? How do we let go? How do we enjoy? How do we love? How do we embrace? The next cards we have here, wow, I was not expecting that. We have Eagle Spirit. Spirit has your back. If you think you're alone, if you think you're isolated, if you think you can't do it, you're not alone. You can do it. There's a bigger plan that is at works right now, and it doesn't solely rely on you carrying it all. Part a bit, actually, a big part of it is you letting it go, surrendering it, laying it down at Divine's feet, and allowing your spiritual team to do what they do best, which is look out for you and to take care of the things that you can't, you shouldn't be taking care of all on your own. Or you could, but you'll receive like half of the reward. Um, koi fish spirit, there is always enough. Do you believe that? And if you're not really tapped into abundance energy and peace energy, then I guarantee you you're tapped into anxiety and depress de depressive energy because you're, you're not in alignment with your spirit. You're, you're more aligned in worst case scenario thinking or you're not giving yourself the space, the time to mourn something that is healthy. You're not giving yourself the time to release, to relinquish pain. You're holding on to it. And that's when spirit says, listen, it's for me to help you through this. Give it to me. I'm going to help you. Give it to me. I'll give you hope. Give it to me. I'll give you faith. Give it to me. I'll give you a blessing. Give it to me. I'll give you a path. Give it to me and I'll give you an answer. Give it to me and I'll give you peace. The next cards we have here, Parrot Spirit, watch your words. So oh, yeah, watch your words. That to me is signaling your prayer. It's signaling to me, not just watching your words, but listening to others, connecting with others, connecting with your higher self, speaking your feelings. And when it says watch your words, some of you guys might be very cautious with what it is that you say. And that's another thing too that it is that you need to let go of is saying the right thing at the right time or being fearful of speaking your truth. You may be overly watching your words and it's time for you to just let the words fly. For those of you guys that are artists and creatives, maybe stop being so hard on yourself. It's like a person who is naturally creative and intuitive and they just don't allow that creativity to flow because they're so anxious on saying the right thing or creating the right story or creating this perfect atmosphere from what they learned in all their classes because they take writing and creative arts very seriously. But they're in the, in the, in the, in the pursuit of growing their craft and growing what they're naturally gifted at they stunt themselves because their creative their gift is stunted by what the world is telling them how they need to express their gift and the divine gave you the gift to begin with and sometimes it's important for you to just flow look at someone's going to drag me because of what she said about um transgender and i don't fully understand i didn't fully look into jk rowling um in the past when she said this because I was definitely and still am in a season of my life where my main focus is my business, Bahati Life, and my artistry there that I'm not looking into current events, mainstream media, and keeping up with every last dilemma or drama, you know, it just to me is a huge distraction and I'm not someone who, I've spent more time in islands in my mind and in my life than connected to the outside world asking people and keeping updated with what everybody's saying and what the latest gossip is but so for that forgive me someone got upset when i mentioned jk rowling in the past and then i enjoy her writing and her books i don't know her personal beliefs and if i'm offending anybody right now um that's not my intention um but think about i think from what i've heard about her from what i remember of what i think i've heard she didn't necessarily go to school for writing. She just was creative and wrote her books on the back of a, a napkin in a cafe. And she wrote some of the most, which is a fact, she wrote like one of the, a series of books that were like still probably like a bestseller, you know, just like top historic publications, like will probably go down as a legend, you know, in her because of what she created. And I, I, I the, the, the intention of me sharing this with you now is because it wasn't that she did everything by the book, so to speak, no pun intended, but because from what I've heard, and I could be wrong, she just wrote, she wrote a story. She had a story in her heart and it's a story that speaks to a lot of people to this day. So 
um, yeah, I just am using that example because for many of you guys, you're, you may be holding on to this is the way that it has to be done or this is the way that I was taught to do it. But like, what do you feel? Like, what do you feel? I know what they've told you. I know what you're supposed to do. But is there ever a point where you can just let that go? Can you ever forget what that what was taught taught to you? Can you ever maybe stop pursuing more information, education, just allow yourself to be and to feel and to express and to create and to not get it right. And somehow in not getting it right, it all falls together in the way that it should be. And that's what this full moon represents. So let me go ahead and put these candles up here and I'm gonna shuffle one last card from the Oracle. And then I'm going to leave because we have a ton of orders that need to get out. And my cousin is coming over to help me wrap and pack them. While I continue at my altar and I create, I'm allowed to focus while he ships. So easy. Thanks, Tando. Thank you guys for your patience for those of you that have placed orders with me. I will be closing this shop down um, in the coming days, not forever, but just to give me time to catch up and to work on readings and then reopen Queen Bee Homestead Co., which is my body butters and scented body oils. What is the final message from the angels and guides? Wow, that was beautiful the way that just twisted out. Wow, you know what I just realized? I don't even have the book. It's in my bag, it's in my purse. Wow. Okay, wow. Okay, let me go ahead and start by grabbing the, well no, I'll go ahead and tell you what I do know about this card because I just pulled it for a friend. This card represents being in the middle of the storm, but not allowing the storm to, to saturate you, not allowing the storm to freak you out, to shock you, to stun you, because you don't allow the outside world to get in on to your internal world. You don't allow it to destabilize you, to steal your peace, to uproot you. Let me get the rest of the book so that we can read what these other cards represent. I'll be right back. All right, darlings, the book has been secured. Let's go ahead and dive in. The first card is, as the bringer of rain, Diva has the magical ability to remain dry when she walks through storms. She is resilient and calm. She models for you how to walk through the storms of life without ever getting bogged down in other people's drama. Her resilience and discernment contribute to the limitless electric potential she derives from the rain and the storms. If you're pulling this card, it's asking you to replenish your energy by integrating all parts of yourself. Doing so will help you meet her edict to be clear, incisive, and precise. Like the powerful voltage of lightning, you can gather and aim your energy into a firebolt of action. The invitation here is to remember that rain is nature's cleansing, nourishing action upon the earth, and this energy is yours to claim. The next card we have, 26, Tenet. Okay. Her circle, her symbol is a circle on top of a triangle separated by a bar representing arms. It is often found underneath a crescent moon, eliminating sailors' paths around the world. Tanit's symbol guides the seafaring to safety, success, and liberation. If you have drawn this card, the ancestors are calling you to have courage, to be discerning about who is granted access to you, and to navigate that which you are asked to endure with patience and power. Freedom and success are yours to gain once you travel the stormy seas that surround you. The invitation is never to give up to begin to create an enduring legacy by unapologetically staking claim to that which is yours. That is beautiful. The next card we have here is alignment. Number 
This card is asking you to consider the role you're playing in your community. You are not expected to be all things to all people all the time, but you are expected to stand in integrity and fulfill your divine mandate. Consider what you already know in your bones. Is your action aligned with your greater soul's purpose? Wow. The invitation is to recognize your community roles, communicate with integrity, and take aligned action. That is really powerful. Nambi. Remember, you are not everything to everyone. You may be gifted in many things, but that doesn't mean that you have to share your gifts in the same way with everyone all the time. Nambi. Nambi's father and brothers were so frustrated by Nambi's defiance of custom that they put Kintu through a series of increasingly impossible tasks. Kintu passed them all, and he and Nambi were married. After their nuptials, Nambi shared her essential knowledge about human life with Kintu, helping him achieve human status. Nambi awakens in you the place where your, your gumption lives. She reminds you that you have the seeds and the knowledge to plant, nurture, and reap the harvest. She reminds you that you have the cow and the knowledge of how to milk as well as breed it. You possess the fundamentals of survival and simply need to apply them to allow yourself to thrive. The invitation here is do not be beholden to tradition or others' expectations. Go after what you want and make a way if none exists. Very, very powerful. Very, very, very powerful. So I'm going to get this message up for you guys. Quick, 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 quick. I am sending you all of the love and the protection and the guidance and the awareness and the clarity that this full moon in Sagittarius brings. Do look after yourself. Do be blessed and to prior prioritize your peace, your health, and your happiness as the divine wants for you. I'll see you guys in my next video or in Bahati Love Notes reading. The links for that will be down below. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.